Has anyone ever heard of Poetry Slam before? Slam poetry? Yeah, put your hands up if you have. Yeah, a few of you. Whoa, heaps of you. Well, for those of you who haven't, it was started by a guy in Chicago. He was going to these poetry readings and he would stand up there and be like, ah, the cat sat on the mat and it was fat. And he's like, that's it. We're going to put a time limit on it. We're going to make it um, energetic. Um, the point is to um, entertain the crowd, to engage the crowd, and you're going to be randomly judged by members of the audience. So I'm from Bankstown Poetry Slam. It's the largest poetry, regular poetry slam in the country. If you like what you see here, there's going to be three awesome poets. I'm going to do two short poems for you right now. Um, like I said, it is randomly judged by members of the audience. But this poem I did, I didn't care about the points. I wrote it for my grandparents who came to Australia um, and they had to change their names. And I never really understood why because if they can pronounce Shakespeare, if they can pronounce Dostoevsky, Alighieri, Kafka, Tolkien and Baudelaire, they can pronounce your name. If they can pronounce Mozart, Tchaikovsky, Beethoven and Bach, Picasso, Da Vinci, Michelangelo and Van Gogh, Aristotle, Einstein, Galileo and Freud. If they can pronounce Monet while sipping Moe, quote Plato while eating Paleo, read Latin while watching Aladdin while eating Greek salad and wearing a caftan. If they can eat a burrito in a kimono, dance the indie with a bindi, order foie gras with a side of quinoa, then jump in their Toyota and drive to Woola Ra, don't want to be late for yoga. If they can learn to make cappuccinos in a shop, they can learn to write some letters on a cup. If they can fly to piss through our continents, they can try to hiss through our consonants. If they can wrap their tongue around my kebab, they can wrap their tongue around my vocab. For I, I'm not your lunch order that you can point at and stumble through, nor am I your fashion item that you have appropriated to. This label that was given to me and you is wrapped in history, so get to know yours too. Because if they can pronounce Joffrey, if they can pronounce Arya, Tyrion, Sansa and Daenerys, Hagrid, Hermione, Dumbledore and Voldemort, if they can pronounce Macbeth, Hamlet, Romeo, Othello, art thou thee, doth hither, sither, thither, if they can pronounce Shakespeare, then they can pronounce your name. Thank you. So I heard some of you in the audience say you were clicking. I like that. I like that. Can, you, can everyone do that? So clicking in Poetry Slam, if you like something, you give them a click. You can stomp your feet. You can give a yas if you're really into it. You can be loud as you want. Do it. I want to feel that. Um, I'm going to do one last poem, and you're going to test that clicking now. I want you to click if you like it. If you don't, that's cool. Um, you can boo. I don't mind. But then for the next poets, I really want you to keep that clicking going. So practice it for me now. I grew up watching um, YouTube a lot. I never really watched TV. And I found that I connected a lot more with the people that I saw on YouTube, with a lot of the bloggers, um, and kind of finding my identity. And I still kind of do that a lot. Um, yeah, it's weird that people so far away um, you connect with kind of more with. But anyway, this was kind of inspired by some of the bloggers and stuff that I used to watch. And yeah, I don't know. Dear 16-year-old me, don't pop that pimple. Dear 16-year-old me, stop chasing that guy. No, seriously, don't pop that pimple. It really does leave scars. Dear 16-year-old me, stop chasing that other guy. He may have a six-pack me into cool music now, but he ends up obsessed with six-packs and obsessed with really bad dubstep. Dear 16-year-old me, don't worry about what really bad dubstep is. Right now, just keep vibing to the strings and snares that make you happy. Ramones, Led Zeppelin, they laugh at you now, but they'll be buying their shirts in JJ soon. Dear 16-year-old me, your teachers are humans too. Be nice to them. You want to be one one day. On that note, stop hating poetry. You'll start performing it in time. No, keep hating poetry. 
So you'll be inspired to spit fire and bring tired poetry alive. Dear 16-year-old me, unlearn your curriculum. There's more to life than the colonial stories outsold, more histories of heroes untold. Dear 16-year-old me, learn your history. Take pride in the roots that raise your roses. Learn the language that laughs on the lips of your grandparents. Dear 16-year-old me, visit your grandparents. Savor every spoonful of your nene's pilav like it's your last. Little do you know it will soon be your last. Ask questions about their life. And maybe this poem wouldn't be so long, dear 16-year-old me. It's okay to read Harry Potter again. (laughs) For right now, it's magic is the realest thing you know. Dear 16-year-old me, real will come in a way you have no idea now. Real friends, real aspirations, real love by God. Real love will come barging through the door. Welcome it. The doorbell is already ringing, dear 16-year-old me, answer the door. Let yourself in. The real you is waiting to be loved, dear 16-year-old me. Stop worrying, stop stopping, stop listening to people who tell you what to do, especially if they claim to be a wiser version of your older self. Dear 16-year-old me, keep dreaming, keep keeping. Keep questioning. I know it's not so hard. It seems so hard, but I assure you it isn't simple. It is simple, but I assure you right now, the only thing you need to do is to please don't pop that pimple. Thank you. 